she asked the network to provide a different producer. You're kidding me. Unfortunately, you are fired from the show. Hello, world. Hello. It is us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, off to a great start. <laughs> I'm Chef Kevin, the host of my Twitch channel <laughs> and podcast simulator. And I'm with one of my good friends, Rochelle Chen. Hi, everybody. I have so much crap on the table, as always. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here, Rochelle. Of course. I'm honored to have you. Everyone in the chat, say hi to Rochelle, even though she can't see it. Um. Oh, go I have, ahead. I have a thing for you. Wow, more guests need to step up. A little gift. Yes. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, a pending <laughs> review happening in the middle of podcast simulator. <laughs> this is incredible. Um, I love this. We got a. This looks like a ballpoint. Yeah, with a fine tip, feminine dress, beautiful pen. <laughs> I definitely will be discussing this more on Thursday. Um, I need to be making my uh, pen up calendar, and I have a feeling this is going to make the cut. Wow, you distracted me so quickly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm I was now, really excited to give it I'm to you. I'm all the way in. Um, that's very nice of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Where did you get this? Um, I believe that I got that in Taiwan. Wow, this ain't no staples down the street no. bull crap like I do. That's why it makes no sense. Feminine dress. Feminine dress. <laughs> Um, this rules. You rule, Rochelle, so I shouldn't be surprised. Um, here's a perfect segue. Have you gotten any gifts from a host before? <laughs> I have. Okay. Name names. Okay, first off, I will mention you and the oh, boys. Oh, crap. I didn't mean to uh, switch you into immediately complimenting <laughs> me, although I can't complain. Yeah, you and the boys got me a Fortnite gift card. Yes, okay. Actually, two, which I think equated to over $100. Yes, because I couldn't buy a single $100 gift card, so I sent you two, a $69 gift card, nice, and like a $33 <laughs> gift card because they didn't have them in um, normal amounts. Um, I had to, like, <laughs> split it up. Um, but... Other than me, sorry, I didn't mean to immediately trick you into uh, complimenting <laughs> me. Um, this is a weird question. Why am I starting with weird questions? Any uh, other, uh, the Doughboys give you a beautiful gift? I got crumble cookies from nice. the Get Played host. Very that cool. That was very nice. That was way too many cookies, <laughs> but I appreciated it. Um, and then one year, the Gossip Kings, Carl and Lamar, yep. they asked me what I wanted for Christmas, mm -hmm. just generally asking, not saying they were going to buy me anything, yep. but I was like, I really want a power washer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And they sent a power washer to my house. No like, way. Two really? Years ago. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, that's really cool. What a specific gift. I know. Um, how was it? It works amazing. Did it was they... actually too powerful that it was chipping off paint on my house. Wow. Was it a Ryobi? Do you know the brand? Um, is that the green one? Yes. Yeah, I think it was a Ryobi. Yes. Um, that rules. Uh, <laughs> I have some Ryobi stuff. I don't have the power washer. Um, there's a big conversation, I believe, on like, I don't know if it would be Reddit or probably somewhere on Reddit, about renting a power washer or do you just go all out and buy it? Mm. Um and I like the idea of renting one, but I think if I were to power wash, I would just get a power wash. But then I would, <laughs> I'd be like, I'd use it once. This is why people rent it. I'm figuring it out out loud. <laughs> is they say, you know what? I'm probably never going to use this again. And then it just sits in their uh, garage, I imagine. I will say I have used it exactly twice <laughs> in the past two to three years. Um, but I don't know. I'm going to immediately backpedal. How often do you need to be power washing? Probably once or twice a year I, at most, right? I guess so. Guy who power washes way too much. Um, <laughs> that sounds uh, tough. But that's a very hilarious gift. If you were to give me 100 guesses, I would not have guessed power <laughs> washer. Um, so that's an amazing answer. Uh, Rochelle, I want to, before we get into podcast simulator, 
Um, you and I have worked together for like a year and a half. Mm-hmm. I don't know if listeners know this, but you recorded the first Hollywood handbook at HeadGum. And it was the, I would say, most pressure recording that we've ever done, probably. I can't think of a more high pressure recording, what? which was the 500th episode with Ben Stiller. Oh my God. And I it was our about that. first recording. In the studio. Um, I shouldn't say that. We had done like a pro. We did a pro version, but it wasn't like with the Zoom guest. Yeah, it was yeah. just us. And I maybe a flagrant ones. Truly like one record. And then it was like, okay, now let's do the biggest episode in the history of the podcast. Um, and it went great. There weren't any issues. Okay, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, no. I was, remember being like, I'm talking... To Ben Stiller. Yeah. He can't see me, but he's hearing my voice. I know. That's kind of the tough thing with the studio is you kind of have to, I guess, like switch to a camera of just you for the talent to see you sometimes. And I guess you can kind of do it with the the switcher. But if like if it's the webcam that's on the TV, uh, you can't. They yeah. just have to assume that uh, you're there or they're like, <laughs> who's talking? Uh, it can get pretty tricky. I know. I'm like, what does Ben Stiller think I look like by my voice? <laughs> what does he imagine for me? That's the whole episode. He's like, <laughs> blonde? Um, that would have been probably a very fun episode. Um, so you were with us for since basically day one, um, and you've been super helpful. You've recorded a bunch of episodes for us. Um, you've made probably 60 clips, if not more, of Hollywood Handbook <laughs> yeah. and the pro version and flagrant ones and foosballs. You've made you've done like a ton of very cool stuff. And I would say you probably, I'm trying to think of any others, edited the most viral clip ever of Hollywood Handbook, which was the one with Hayes and Iowa Debris. Oh yeah. Um, um that really blew up. And uh wow. that was very cool. So we owe you a ton. Wow. I do want to formally apologize that I was always very late with the clips. Well, and that's the thing we could talk about, too. How tardy you are. No. Um, you, like me, work on a million shows. Um, and before we get into that, no, let's just get into it. How are you with with like time management? It is, I feel like if I am a little bit off on my calendar, my whole week is ruined. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's a period where you're doing like Gossip Kings, all the handbook clips, chaotic, um, get played. Yeah. Um, how do you do it? I don't know. I feel like every day, every day I'm improving a little bit, but it is, it is very difficult Mm -hmm. to manage so many shows, especially when you do different things for each show. For sure. So I feel like I finally have found something that works for me. Yeah. Which is like, um, I have all my shows, show releases in order and then a little checklist next to them when you click into it on Notion. Um, I want to ask about Notion because I've really wanted to use it. I'm, do you like it? I do like it. It's like, it's so, it's so open world that you can like customize anything for it to be like working for you, but also that like makes it hard. Yes. It can be a little too open at times. Exactly. Um, I do you use any other I've started using um shout out to my associate producer AJ McKeon introduced me to Todoist um which is like another kind of to do oh, app yeah. I have heard of that um and what I like about it is you can have like your own personal to-do list and then you can also have shared to-do list with other people mm. and I think you could do that with like the notes app and probably other apps But what's really nice is I have, like, a to-do list that's, like, just me. I have one uh, with Zach, the editor, um, AJ, someone else. And it's just nice to have it, like, my name slash whoever's Mm -hmm. name. And then I can just kind of pair um, whatever the, like, things that are due um, with each individual person. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, like, even more different. Like, you're, like, actually managing other Mm -hmm. people, which I don't have to do. Yeah. Do you use, um, do you put to-do list things on your calendar at all? Or do you like to just have it on a to-do list? 
I need a separate to-do list. Yeah, because same. Because there's like 10 million things that need to be done every day. Yep. So a calendar, like I tried to do the GCAL like calendar blocking method. Same. And I was like, I'm just not. It's stressful. It's stressful. I'm not, and I'm also not doing it in the time that I need to be doing it. And I always underestimate how long it will take me it to do It created like false deadlines for me too, mm. which is probably maybe a good thing, but it stressed me out because I would see like, um, oh, this thing is due at like four o'clock on my calendar. And then I would, yeah. it would be like six and I'd be like, oh, I'm late. And then I was like, <laughs> well, not really. Like it's. As long as kind of the rule of thumb, I, and we've never talked about this, but for me, the rule of thumb with like Hollywood handbook has always been as long as the guys wake up and the episode is out, mm -hmm. I, I'm okay. <laughs> um, so when I like would kind of set false, not false, but just like made up deadlines for myself, it then became a thing where I was like, oh, I didn't, I'm now stressing myself out mm -hmm. over nothing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely interested in notion. Um, I like using Todoist. Um, so what other, okay, now we've talked time management cause that's my favorite talking point, probably boring <laughs> to listen to. Um, I want to go back to when you started in pod land, because I think a lot of podcast producers have <clears throat> kind of a similar, um, Traje trajectory of like they were around UCB people yeah, or they yeah. were around like comedy people and then kind of like got their foot in that way um, where you were in the more like music world and creative. Am I wrong? Like you, I, I definitely view you as a more like artistic creative person that came into the podcast oh, world okay. That's rather, very nice of you. rather than like a boring like nine to five like a lot of us. Well, I think my journey, I guess, mm -hmm. was like I was very much on this trajectory to uh, like direct. And I was like, I'm going to direct music videos. Like that's cool. going to be my career path. Yeah. Um, and I ended up and in interning at a advertising agency, mm -hmm. specifically a Gen Z really? <laughs> advertising agency. Yeah. Like we were marketing towards Gen Z. Oh, my gosh. What uh, was some of the like language you were using oh my god i don't even know yeah it i couldn't tell you sure like some cringy like is this hot or not yeah uh -huh. yeah and then just like you know they were like a value-based advertising agency sure. which actually doesn't exist no not at all um but yeah so like i started as like an editor uh -huh. so i was like editing these commercials um and the company is very small and I somehow was like promoted to creative director very fast. Wow. And cool and scary. Cool and scary. Yeah. Was not qualified to be a creative director. I didn't uh -huh. even know what it meant, to be totally honest. Uh -huh. um, but this place was just like crazy. And like the CEO and founders were kind of out of their minds a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I started like ideating and like pitching to brands and like being in charge of the creative for these campaigns. Wow. Certain, That's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Certain pop stars. Cool. Um, I, that I'm not allowed to say. Sure, yeah. Uh, but. It rhymes with Riley Cyrus. I don't know. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> like that is that's her last name, actually. <laughs> um, so stupid. Yeah. So just like being put on these cool. calls and then, and then like. At the same time, directing, mm -hmm. like, commercials, like, pretty exclusively. Yeah. So I was, like, very much on the path of being a director for ads, which everyone hates. Sure, yeah. So I was like, I can't do this. And also the company was Was it, bad. like, kind of like a creative job? Not even job, but, like, a creative title in a very, like, non-creative company? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um. Which is impressive, you know, people that can do that, I think, are, are very impressive. But if you're not into it, it becomes... I had a similar experience at... I was a page at NBC. Like, oh, really? Like how Kenneth was and stuff. <laughs> and I thought I was going to have, like, a very easy path from, like, that to, like, writing on a TV show. I was like, well, this will just take a couple months. Uh, the first thing they'll do is put me in a writer's room, obviously. 
And like the first thing I was doing was like answering calls for like an HR department. And I was like, oh, oh I don't, God. this is not, it was like way more business oriented than mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be. And I quit after six months. It was <laughs> like you. 900 people applied, eight got it. And then after a few months, I was like, ah, uh, this isn't for me. Sorry. And they were like, what, why did you? Um, so you're like, but 900 people want this job. How yeah, could I was you like, give it leave? to the other 800, something, something. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was like way more business focused than I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And I was hoping to spin it of like, oh, maybe I could do something creative and cool in this. And it was just like, oh, no, this isn't what I wanted to be doing. Yeah. Um. So, um. yeah, kind of a similar thing. So then from there, from the ad agency, do you go straight from that to music videos? Yeah, it was kind of um. I went freelance after I quit my job. In a very dramatic way. Cool. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, just taking on freelance work, editing, still editing for, like, other agencies. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, like, really kind of focusing on editing as, like, the main income and, like, pitching on um, did, director's work. Did you, work. like, drive your car, blast in music with, like, a big thing that said, I quit <laughs> on the uh, side of the car? Oh, my God. Can I tell you my quitting story? Please. Yeah, if you're comfortable sharing <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you a a quitting story, too. Okay, amazing. I love quitting stories. Yeah, me too. Uh, So my boss at the time, very, like, um, woo-woo, witchy, you know. Sure. A lot going on. Yeah, like Uh goop. Yep, 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 yep. Um, So she really wanted me to go to her psychic. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. And at this point, I was already, like, really unhappy at at the job. Sure. And uh, I was like... I don't want to do that. That's weird. I know you use your psychic as like your therapist. Yep. I'm going to get narked on. <laughs> and, There's just a little microphone. <laughs> exactly. Under a flower. Yeah. And this was during COVID. So um, wow. I was like, they kept pushing it. And I was like, okay, cool. Like if you want to like spend $200 on me to talk to your, yep. psych, uh, your psychic, I, yeah. I will do it. Um. So then the psychic, I'm on the phone with her and she's like, and you're like, stomach chakra or whatever uh-huh. it's like so orange like you're so creative but like there is a cord coming th- through your stomach that's like attached to someone yeah, else it's an xlr cable <laughs> it's an xlr cable <laughs> <laughs> um and she's like and it's like attached to someone who's like sucking your creativity and i was like yeah huh uh-huh. okay interesting yeah and she's like yeah like you really like i'm gonna remove it for you but like we need to like um kind of cut ties with what with whoever wow. sucking this creativity away from you. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's remove it, please. Yeah, let's do it. And she's like, okay, do you kind of have an indication of who it is? And I was like, yeah, yes. my boss. I have a strong indication. <laughs> and did this person know who your boss was? Did, yeah. So they connected they connected and then you immediately were like, yeah, it's, it's that person. Yeah. Wow. For sure. I like, and then what was the reaction? She was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> well, oh all right. Gosh. I want to, uh, I want you to imagine insert boss's name sure, sure, sure. in the room with you yep. and imagine like a golden light surrounding them and just like imagine it getting bigger and bigger and bigger until It explodes and shatters into a million pieces. Wow, that's so (laughs) specific. So I did this, like, exercise with her. Yep. Um, She removed the cord. And um, wow. a few days later, um, I'm talking to my boss. And um, I'm kind of, she kind of opens up the floor of, like, how how are you doing? Uh Like, how was the session? And I was like, you know, actually, she gave me a lot of clarity. Wow. And I actually don't think I want to work here anymore. <laughs> Holy shit. That is amazing. What was their reaction? Oh. Just kind of like, immediate, oh. Immediate tears. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I kind of felt bad, but also she was like, you know, it was like a yeah, place was where time. I was like, we're family, but really we weren't. No, and when it's time to go, it's time to go. Um, That's so funny. I can't. I wonder what that conversation was like when she saw her next of like, so I heard you had an interesting conversation with <laughs> Rochelle. Yeah. I hope uh, she blamed it on the the psychic. That, and I wonder if, um, see, where my brain was going is like, what if your boss secretly didn't like you? 
and told the psychic, like, maybe try to convince Rochelle to quit. Whoa. And she was behind it the entire time. Interesting. That would that that would have been 10 steps ahead of me. because That, and it would have been so sad then, like, when the boss started crying because they were behind it the entire time. Um, that would have been wild. Um, that's really fascinating. And kind of a... It weirdly sounds like, um, I don't want to say healthy, but just like that you were able to say, thank you for this experience that I normally wouldn't have done. It showed me that uh, I shouldn't be working here. Yeah. I know. Um, it was kind of petty. I was like, I'm going to try to stick the knife in a little no, bit. No, I think, I think you did the right thing. Um, I worked at a, this is so... Uh, this is going to sound sad, but I, I quit. I worked at a retirement center and <gasps> quit to work in podcasting, uh, but I worked at one for a year and it was awesome. Um, it was like one of my first jobs in LA and I, um, for six months did it like kind of nine to five, like Monday through Friday. Then I got the job as a page, but I really liked the retirement home uh -huh. and I really liked all the people there they were so freaking cute and funny oh that's so sweet so I was like can I do that on Saturdays because also I needed the money and the retirement mm -hmm. home paid better than NBC oh yeah so I was like can I do that on Saturdays and they're like sure um but I also started doing the podcast stuff at the same time so then when I would come in on Saturdays I would be like listening to podcasts and like writing episode descriptions and my boss um tr trying to like rightfully call me out was like you can't do both like you have to make up your mind mm. and then I don't want to say calling her bluff but it was said with the confidence of like you're obviously not going to do the podcast shit so like you got to <laughs> oh, pick no. one right now oh and my then, god and then I just said I guess I pick podcast <laughs> and then she said <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> that backfired on her. Okay. And I was like, I could do like, do you want me to like work two more weeks? And she kind of sighed and went, no, you don't, it's up to you. <laughs> and I was like, I guess I'll just finish the shift. And then I left. It was um, wow. kind of a bizarre conversation, but yeah. Cause that wasn't expected at all that. That was no. Happen. And I felt bad. Cause it was like, um, I was just such a bizarre, I was like an activities assistant. And so I talked about this a little bit last week. I got to go to like the movie theaters and museums and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then there would be long periods where I would be like sitting in a library watching two 95 year olds play cards. <laughs> and I was like, well, <laughs> I can listen to a podcast as they play cards for three hours. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely for the best that I left. <laughs> I know. Cause look at, look at this now. Yeah. We're in a studio. <laughs> what if they were recording me? That would be awesome. <laughs> um, but anyway, so from there, from ad, ag ad agency world, you go into editing. Are you, is that are you editing music videos or commercials? Everything? Yeah, all of the above. Um, commercials, music videos, and um, it started getting more into like social content, which yeah. was like um, kind of like more of the easy stuff. Sure. Um, yeah, and then um was freelancing doing that for like a year mm -hmm. and I don't know if you know the story of uh how I got the job at Headgum. I was gonna ask I was assuming it was like something social related with uh the content you were editing no not at all great <laughs> I, I true I went I to truly, a psychic <laughs> Anya was psychic. the psychic uh-huh I truly stumbled into this job cool which you know the luck was on my side but yep. I was at a birthday party mm -hmm. at um 4100 in Silver Lake. Yep. Casey was there. Mm -hmm. And me and Casey were like in an editing collector together that like in, in COVID, we like did vaporwave remixes of like movies and that's would screen awesome. them. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> so that's how we know each other, like online. There was also like group chat survivor within the, that community. Okay. Where great. I had like backstabbed Casey. <laughs> and I like never I didn't know this. I didn't know him that well. Yeah. But when things started opening up, we started seeing each other around. Cool. And um, at this birthday hang, he had just gotten his job at HeadGum. Okay. And he was, like, telling me, he was like, oh, like, my office is, like, right over there on Sunset. Yep. Like, I just got a job. And then jokingly, I was like, give me a job, Casey. And he was and like, okay. <laughs> he was like, okay. And then 
I think not even a week later, Katie Moose uh, reached out. Reached out. Wow. And was like, "Do you want to work on the show called Gossip Kings?" Very cool. Uh, we need someone to produce it. And no interview, nothing. Just, just like Casey's Casey's word. Yeah. That was it. The power of Casey's word. The power of Casey's word. Um, that's cool. That's actually how I got fired. No. Um, <laughs> That's uh, really cool and does go to show you like how solid of a dude he is that they just yeah. fully trust him uh, and rightfully so. Uh, so you started on Gossip Kings. Did you start right at the beginning, like first episode? Um, no, I think it was like halfway through the second season. Okay. Uh, I uh, don't know who I took over for. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think Jonathan. I don't know who I don't know. Jonathan Someone is. named Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Shout out, Jonathan. Shout out, Jonathan. Um, yeah, and I was just like, it, like, shadowed Casey for a session. Yep. I was like, Casey, I, I genuinely don't know anything about audio. Yeah. Like, not one thing. Uh-huh. Like, I only do video stuff. I have Editing no idea. was more of your specialty. Totally. Yep. Like, didn't know how to, mi- didn't know how a microphone worked. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And he's like, you'll be fine. Like, it, it's literally, you'll just like, press these buttons. That's kind of the goal. And I, I had a fortunate, similar experience when I started at Earwolf where I, like, didn't know how to record anything. And the engineer was just like, just sit here and watch me do my thing for a little bit. And then eventually I will start handing things over to you. But, um, yeah, so it becomes that thing where the first few I had, it was like full imposter syndrome. Yeah. And your confidence like gains over time until anything goes wrong. And then so quickly you're like, dad, <laughs> yeah. dad, Casey, <laughs> what happened? It said it stopped. Um, but I don't know why. Oh, I hit stop. Okay. Thank you. Um, so you kind of learned on the job. Yeah. Totally on the job. Anya like t- taught me the basics. Yep. Um, and then I think over time, just educating myself on like YouTube and or like from Emma has been a huge help to you. Yeah, Emma's the best. Yeah. Um, so when you started on Gossip Kings, did you have experience like editing audio already or was it, was this kind of like first for recording and editing, um, like everything? Or were you able to, like, kind of apply some of those uh, commercial and music video experience with the editing of Gossip Kings? Yeah, so the all the video stuff, Mm -hmm. like, easy peasy, like, three cameras, like, and then they made it even easier with the switcher. But, like, the audio stuff, I was given, like, a headgum PDF, like, guide of best practices to to how to use Audition. And I just, like, followed those steps. Yep. Um... And my roommate and act- and best friend from high school is is an audio engineer. Very cool. So I like leaned on her a lot. Yes. Too. And she works on Team Coco shows, yeah. right? Yeah. Was she doing that already? Or was it like did you guys start around a similar time or I think she was working on a couple podcasts like independently, like yep. freelance engineering and editing. Cool. Um and I think around the same time. She might have gotten her Team Coco position like slightly before mm-hmm. I started working at HeadGum. That's cool. Yeah. So it was just like weird that we both ended up in podcasting. Yeah. It's so fascinating um, and must feel like such a comfort anytime there's like an issue. You could walk next door and be like, hey, um, why does it do this? Yeah. Do they, to get into the weeds a little bit, do they also edit in Audition or do they use a different... Software. No, she uses Pro Tools. Nice. So when Pro Tools gang rise up. <laughs> yeah. So she was trying to teach me or try to direct me in like what I was supposed to do to fix sure. certain problems. And she was like, I actually am so unfamiliar with audition. And yeah. there was an episode of the recap show, um, which is like the the soccer world cup podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she she mixed that entire thing for me. Really? Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So shout That's out awesome. Joanna. Hell yeah, Joanna. Um, that's very cool. I forgot about the soccer show. Uh, what a time. Um, so, and then, so you're primarily recording and editing the show. 
Uh, did you have any responsibilities like producing uh, or was it kind of like they were just coming in and chatting about each episode? Was that primarily it? Yeah, I think it was like prim- primarily just like um, the most producing I was doing was just scheduling. Yep. Which mm-hmm. literally is it's the a, worst. It's like a huge core of <laughs> producing. <is laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm so bad at this. Landing the the schedules with, with everyone too. And it gets intimidating with um, when a studio starts to add more shows, it becomes a thing where if you're not looking like three to four weeks out, mm-hmm. um, you have no availability. Um, but then it can kind of get into a tricky thing where like you want to look three or four weeks out, but your host doesn't know their schedule three mm-hmm. to four weeks out. So it definitely becomes like a dance with that um, regarding like the trying to be proactive, but only being able to be like so proactive. Yeah. Um, and it's like, if it, if one person mm-hmm. can't do it, then, yeah, it's done. It, then everything is just, everything's messed up. Everything needs to move. Yeah. It's, it's such a nightmare. I can't handle it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty stressful to me. Oh. The, um, what's almost harder is like a last second change because then, you're just asking everyone for favors, like other shows, the network, the guest. Mm-hmm. Um, so it becomes uh, uh, pretty interesting. Someone just put in the chat, uh, Sonic uh, Tyon F says, I'm gay. And then it says, <laughs> this is their first time chat. Uh, so <laughs> thanks for joining, Sonic. That's great, um, Sonic. Josh says, was this, I'm catching up. Uh, I loved those streams. Was this Racer Trash? They're asking yeah. about your Vaporwave remix. Oh, my God, yeah, it was Racer Trash. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Shout that out Josh, watching. who will probably be on here one day as well. One of my oldest Earwolf producer friends. Great guy. Um, and has a video game out. Um, oh, wow. Anyway, back to how much scheduling sucks. <laughs> uh, I know, I feel like I'm outing myself as like, not the most competent producer, but I really am not good with it. Uh, no, not at all. I think it's a similar uh, thing where it's like everyone has strengths and, and weaknesses. I feel like I'm good at the scheduling stuff, but other things like um, like pitching a good episode uh, like or a specific thing or like a booking thing can really like throw me off mm-hmm. in a way that other people are like... Uh, no, I'm really good at that. Um, but, uh, it's kind of funny though, cause you sound very type A with, um, your to-do lists and stuff. I feel like I have to be in sure. order to actually get anything done. Yeah. But I am lucky that on all the shows that I work on mm-hmm. right now, I only technically produce Get Played, yep. but honestly, Matt does all of the real producing. Uh-huh. <laughs> so <laughs> the Matt is beast. basically the producer and I am the engineer uh, editor for let's, that show. Let's, we'll chat about Get Played in a sec um, and take them down a notch. <laughs> um, no. the So Gossip Kings is goes for like another year, year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. We're talking like 2020, maybe end of 2021, 2022 into last year. Um, mm-hmm. And then you're doing the uh, very popular soccer show, um, yes. which is oddly recorded at HeadGum, but is not a HeadGum show um, <laughs> that took over all of Los Angeles <laughs> for 10 weeks. Um, oh, my gosh. My life was because the, the turnover that show was like they would it was watch. was like next day. It was next day because – they were covering the games that were happening at like 3 a.m. in Australia. Yeah. And they would all come in, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it was a super high pressure production. I did not envy you. And um, you did a great job. I think people, uh, hosts specifically, uh, kind of take for granted the same day turnaround. Mm-hmm. Um, most other occupations charge a lot more for like a rush fee. Yeah. And I think we kind of get stuck in a situation sometimes where 
like a show has to record by like X date and then it just kind of becomes a thing where, oh, okay, well, we're just going to record it the night before. Mm -hmm. And kind of the thing that's like, just speaking from experience, that's not being said as like, okay, I guess I will record this or I will edit this right after. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, it's just a tricky thing where sometimes that can be expected of you. Um, and like additional compensation is not brought up, which can be a bummer. <laughs> yeah. I think like the managing expectations of like mm -hmm. hosts or like clients and stuff like that sure. is like, it's so important. Absolutely. You know, at best they just like, are ignorant and don't know actually how much work needs to be done. A hundred percent. And then worst case scenario, they don't care. <laughs> yes. Um, a hundred percent true. Uh, that's been kind of a big learning experience for me is the like setting expectations as early as I can, because I think sometimes I would like try to pride myself. I'm like, I go with the flow. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I don't like this flow. <laughs> yeah. um, it becomes like, and then you're kind of trapped in it because if you try to like say something, it could seem like you're backpedaling. Mm -hmm. um, it just kind of makes the whole, this is kind of the bummer thing about freelance too, is like sometimes it could feel like we're all competing against ourselves. So then you don't want to mm -hmm. like bring up an, an issue because then you could kind of fear that the host is like, okay, well, let's just find someone who who will be. Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're you're replaceable. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, this person's cheaper and is willing to do it overnight. Yeah, and they will gladly do it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a the fascinating thing is you do it longer. It's like, uh, I'm, I got to start being picky about specific things. Yeah, know your worth. Um, so Gossip Kings ends, and then is the recap show, the soccer show that you're working on, is that happening while Gossip Kings is happening? Or that is it... was happening while Gossip Kings <sighs> was still happening. That's wild. Um, and at that yeah. time, you started making clips for Hollywood Handbook, too. And I think I remember Anya giving me a heads up, like, uh, Rochelle might need a little bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> might have someone help out um, because you were doing so much work mm -hmm. um, all at the same time. Uh, yeah. And that becomes, uh, extremely exhausting. How did you, how are you able to manage that? I think I had to tell myself like, this is, this will, there is an end date to this. Yes. The world cup will end. <laughs> the world cup will end. And Rochelle's <laughs> going to sleep every night just whispering that the world cup the will world end. Cup will end. <laughs> And it did. And I think it was it was a really rough summer for sure. Yep. Um, and yeah, that summer, I think it was like August. Yeah, that's it, it, right. it, there was nothing else happened for me that month except the World Cup. Yep. Um, that is d definitely a reassuring thing on some shows that I've worked on um, that I've like been genuinely stressed out about is sometimes that like end date is like the only thing <laughs> keeping yeah. you going, which sounds kind of sad because you can work with great people and it just be like a, a tough experience. Yeah. But um, sometimes like that kind of like final date can be a uh, extremely tough, uh, like that can be the only thing keeping you going yeah. sometimes. Do you ever get that feeling sometimes? Like I, I get to the end of my to-do list. I'm like kind of ahead. And then I realize this, the shows I'm working on could potentially and probably, hopefully, are going on forever, and yes. I just have to do this again. There's a, a a quote that I think Hayes said it. I don't think Sean did, where Hayes said, you know, one of the scariest things to me is this show coming to an end, and the only thing that's scarier is the show never stops. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that that is its own challenge and it's it's kind of a, a default move sometimes where i will pitch with these really funny guys on um an episode that comes out tomorrow and uh i uh they have a show called guys and uh -huh. um they just talk about like uh you know uh wood table guys and uh, we'll do like a whole <laughs> episode on types of um guys that are very uh specific so i pitched to Hayes. I was like, what if um, 
we should just talk about the 20 year plan for their show. Like <laughs> oh what God. guys will they be talking about 17 years, years from now? Um, so uh, yeah, that's kind of like a weird element of it as well that sometimes I, I get in my head of like, Oh my God, how are we going to do handbook five years from now? Like what kind of episodes will we do? But you know, I think if you're working with and and you do, when you're working with like talented hosts, they kind mm-hmm. of just are able to find new things with the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, in a way that sometimes when I try to like plan it, it just like no, it 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 evolves mm-hmm. on its own. Um, but yeah, I don't envy. Um, you know, or it's just like with um Gossip Kings, like they watched the finale. You know, and, and um, Office Ladies, the same thing, where it's like they've watched every episode mm-hmm. of The Office, so then it's like, then what do we do? And yeah. Do we do a new show, et cetera? A uh, completely different premise. Um, but um, anyway, so Gossip Kings uh, finishes, the soccer so- show finishes, Rochelle survives the World <laughs> Cup. Do you remember who won? Oh, my God. Me neither. I don't follow soccer. I sorry, I fully set you up to fail. Oh my god, I don't remember. Um I'm oh sure my god, I, this is so embarrassing. you probably blocked it out. Um <laughs> fully set you up to fail. I apologize. That was a mean host. Move. I still love women's sports. <laughs> sorry, Tobin Heath and Kristen Press. It's so embarrassing. Um uh so we had a producer who I don't know if you've met before. His name was Andy Neese. He's a super nice guy. He produced the Flager ones for years. And on his final episode, Sean Hayes and Carl asked him to name 10 NBA players. <laughs> um, and I think he like barely got through it. And it would be the same for me for any sports show that I work on. I wouldn't yeah. be able to do it. And I've recorded hundreds and hundreds of hours of it. That's how I felt when I was um, recording the flagrant ones for you. Yeah. I was like, Another, everyone uh, is laughing. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. I want to laugh too, but I There's don't a- know. I couldn't tell you 5% of what was said. It's really funny when it happens, too, because it's like it is a different language being spoken. You understand <laughs> the rhythm of a joke, and yeah. then everyone laughs. Someone says Spain won, by the way. Thank you for oh, that. Oh, yes, that's right. Thank um, you. <laughs> Sorry, Spain. You, f- you, <clears throat> you feel the rhythm of the joke. <clears throat> everyone laughs, and you're like, man, I bet if I knew that, that would have been so fucking funny to me. Um, I have a similar experience with foosballs right now with football where I do not follow football but I record 90 minutes of it every week for the last 62 straight weeks. We just got YouTube TV. So uh-huh. s- football will so you're be watching on. now. So now I will watch. And I, it is like a Jason Bourne moment where like, I am now connecting faces to names that I have heard every week for 60 weeks. Mm. I'm like, wait, that's CJ Stroud. And I know that he's going to throw <laughs> to this guy and that running back's had a tough season, wow. but he's getting better. And then I will be like, well, but who are they playing again? Um, I'll miss, like, basic information. Anyway, <laughs> so um, Gossip Kings finishes up. Recap show finishes up. Do you go right into Get Played? No, I think there's a little bit of a gap, right? There's, like, a six-month gap. I think there's a gap where I am working on – I think I was brought on to seek treatment. Okay. Recording? Recording and editing, not producing. Tevi yep. was produce is producing, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um and we did like a a huge batch of records. Cool. Because they Kat and Pat live in different New York coasts. and yeah, different coasts. Do you like that? It, it, it doesn't have to be about seek treatment, totally, just in no, general. No, no. Emma and I were talking about it last week yeah. with, with Doughboys, and I kind of go back and forth on it, where um, when it's done, it feels really good, having totally. like 15 episodes. Uh, it can be very challenging because when it starts, it's very exciting, and mm-hmm. then like a few days in or a few weeks in, all of a sudden it becomes like, uh-oh, running out of steam, yeah. <clears throat> and we still have a lot to record. Um It's fun chatting with producers and engineers about banking because I feel like a lot of them like the idea of it, but then the reality can become challenging. Yeah. I think I had expectations that that would 
put me ahead in sure. the work that I was doing. Yep. But it it kind of doesn't because you're still waiting on like a bunch of people to give you notes. Yep, on stuff. that's true. Yeah. So you're still kind of working on it day to day. So yep. it doesn't make a huge difference except save me some time during the week if we're not recording. That and, and I have a similar experience with here to help. Not that Jake and Gareth give notes, but it's like we have 20 calls banked, which is like several, you know, like a month of yeah, episodes. That's a lot. But I still edit them the night before yeah, yeah. every <laughs> single time. Um and uh I could have at any moment gone, you know what? I'm getting ahead, which is funny because with Action Boys, I do edit ahead. Um, but I think it's because their episodes are three hours long. I'm very, like, intimidated about being behind on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but with other shows that have stuff banked, I still find myself not uh, bank editing. Totally. Um, so that can get kind of tricky. But yeah. at the same time, I will prefer that over – like uh, same day turnaround stuff. I mean, yeah. I guess who wouldn't? Um, let's talk about Get Played. You do um, finish Gossip Kings, do seek treatment for a bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then I was also recording for Factually, Adam Conover's show for a while, I think during yes, that time period. Right. Um, the podcast simulator that we will do feels a little in the Factually like universe, which will be interesting. Okay. Um, I, when I was writing it out, I was like, I think Adam Conover would like a show like this. Um, <laughs> someone asked, will we ever get more episodes of The D-Files? Isn't that, um, that's your podcast, right, <laughs> that, that, that you did? The D-Files is me and Joanna, yes. my roommate best friend. Yep. Um, we did start a podcast, nice. I think, a year ago now. Yep. That and we haven't done an episode in a year. <laughs> I looked on your Instagram and you did like eight episodes, right? Yeah. What was the D files about? I have a feeling. No, it was about conspiracy theories, right? Kind of. It was about ghosts. Okay. Well, okay. Um, what the premise of the show is that me and Chris, me and Joanna grew up in very Christian households. I think Joanna's in the chat. Someone says we recorded more episodes. Does anyone want to edit them? Oh my God, Joanna, is that you? The chorus 666. If it's, it probably is her 666. Um, um, we have, we have recorded a few episodes. It was episodes. about ghosts. Yeah. And um, basically we wanted to, she has experienced ghosts in her life. I've cool. experienced them. Yeah. We've experienced them together. Wow. And we, we call ourselves believers who don't want to believe. So <laughs> we, we discuss these paranormal experiences we have and about other people and we try to debunk them in the stupidest way possible. I love that. You should do more episodes. Oh wow, and someone said they'll edit them. So oh there you God. go. You got it. Uh, we got a full uh every a full season locked and loaded right there. Okay, this is th thank you for lighting a fire under our ass. Joanna pointed out it. we do not have money though, so you will get paid in exposure <laughs> probably. But hey, that's that's more than enough. Um Jojo. How was your experience? So I I I don't know if you know this. I I think you might. Um I hosted a podcast like four or five years ago with you song my friend, oh, no called maybe don't. And uh, we did it for like, I think like nine months. We started before COVID and then it got kind of tricky, right? As like COVID started and we we're uh -huh. like, this is tough. Let's take a break. Um, but I enjoyed the experience of hosting while also being a producer editor, like, we were both very like producer pill mm -hmm. and it was very fun. Like we probably had more fun like pitching um ideas to each other <laughs> than hosting a show. We we're both like, <laughs> holy shit, hosting a podcast is so hard. Um it is hard. It definitely gave me more respect for the host that I work with. Um yeah. and I edited and I still do this. I kind of edit differently with um when it's me on mic than it's like if it's someone else. And that's probably mm -hmm. the goal is to like edit. Um, like it's you every time, but you're just like way more protective where you're like, oh, I said, um, twice. We got to delete that. We <laughs> yeah. got to delete that. But when someone else says it, I'm like, you sound like a person who cares. Yeah, that sounds, but then all of a totally sudden fine. I get like the scalpel out when it's me. Yeah. Um, uh, how was the, your experience hosting a show? Was it easy? Oh was it hard? God. It's so hard. It is, yeah. I think I just like realized about myself. I'm not a natural 
talker. Yeah. Like you're I, doing great right now. Thank you. So, yeah. I, I mean, it helps when you're talking you, to a whatever. friend. Yes. Um, but yeah, just like you get so self-conscious. Like yeah, I was getting you, so self-conscious talking and I'm like, am I sounding stupid? Like I also can't think of one thing to say right now. We recorded so much before we aired anything. And I think part of it was we were just like, um, or at least I was just like fully in my head of like <laughs> every word. I was like, hello, welcome to maybe <laughs> I just, just sounded like a full robot. <laughs> And we have, like, hours and hours of, like, stuff we never released because it just sounded like we were both, like, two robots figuring out <laughs> hosting. But I think part of it was, like, being producers kind of cursed us because we know, like, what made a good pod. So then we mm -hmm. had so many filters in our brains yeah. in front of us that we were, like, eventually we are like, let's just fucking, who cares? Let's just release stuff. Like, we're having fun. Yeah, we don't yeah. need to, like, overthink everything. Um but yeah, I think like it's like you and you song are very good friends, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you yep. guys off of a mic would be yapping away. Yeah. Which is yep. how I feel like me and Joanna were always talking. Yes. And it's like suddenly it's just like the amount of dead space yeah, yeah. of editing our episode. I was like, what's happening here? It's tough, especially that's where um I think people that have like a lot of segments, uh on um, in their shows we would kind of figure out sometimes segments like while we were recording um but any sort of dead air even if it's for like three seconds it feels like five minutes yeah and then you're just <laughs> yeah. like why don't i have anything that my brain is so stupid um so any show that has like a couple of segments in their back pocket i think is always like a nice mm -hmm. thing to throw to because sometimes with like conversational stuff when you like run out of dead air, all of a sudden it becomes a like, oh god, I'm, I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. Um, that's I cool. I didn't stupid. know that. I, yeah, I saw on on your Instagram that you hosted a show. I'm glad someone brought it up in the chat um, because I wanted to ask you about it. Uh, Mike on yapping off. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Um, let's talk about get played. Mm -hmm. um, so when you start, what was that? Must have been like eight or nine months ago, right? I don't think it's been a year yet. I th Maybe it has? I think my first episode was November. It was in November. Oh, right. So, so I'm coming on a year, probably. Um, cool. Wow, um, one year with them. That's, uh, it feels a lot and not a lot. I guess time is just uh, completely gone. Time is fake. <laughs> time is fake. It's not real. Um, how has your experience been? I don't know if you know this about me. I sat in on the very first episode of the show that was recorded of Get Played. Oh, no way. So I got to watch the pilot episode with Jordan Morris. Wow. Uh, it was super fun and funny. And it was one of those very cool experiences of watching a show, the first episode, and going like, yeah, this is going to kill. Oh, my God. Um, it was really fun. And so it's been really fun watching Matt, Nick, and Heather, um, over the years, you know, since like 2019, 18, um, uh, and yeah. sa same thing, watching the show evolve and stuff yeah. and like changing the premise a little bit and, um, uh, just figuring it out together has been really cool. So that's crazy. You're at, you're <clears throat> present for the first I'm an ever old man. episode. <laughs> um, We're the same age. No, uh, 32. Okay. I'm, you're, I'm 31. Yeah. It's I got basically the same. Here. Um, but I'm 65 in podcast. <laughs> so when you, uh, start recording the show, what's it like? Is it, um, a nightmare? <laughs> it was the fucking worst. Yeah, I knew it. This is what everyone came here for. They all knew you were going to yeah, say I'm going to spill some, some real <laughs> stuff right now. Some huge tea. No, uh, it, it's like the best show I work on currently. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's the best. The three of them are so good together. Mm -hmm. They are on it. They're so responsible. There's all, they're like professionals, obviously. There's, there's no hand holding, like I feel like in some other shows totally. that I work on. Same. Like, no yeah. offense, <laughs> but like they have their shit together. They're always on it. They, yeah, it's like I feel like it's a perfect episode every time. That, I don't, I do little to nothing. And I doubt that. <laughs> One thing that um, I really like about them, and it can be uh, challenging, but um, it, works for them and it, it's worked on other shows that I've produced as well is they kind of stick to a schedule 
where it's like we're doing this on Mondays and recording like this on yeah. Wednesdays. And um, I wish more shows did that. Um, I think it becomes a lot of like, we'll figure it out every week. And then it mm-hmm. creates this like kind of micro stress of like, we don't even know when we're recording. Um, where I kind of like that that show, you guys stick to the like a pretty similar uh, recording schedule yeah. like every week. Um, and... I imagine that takes a little bit of like what we were talking about earlier with like the scheduling stress, you know, not that it's like evaporated, but having that kind of like 90% locked in, I'm Mm -hmm. sure that helps a lot. Oh, it's so nice. Cause I mean, Mm -hmm. every other show I work on, it's like, I have no idea, like whatever shows on the calendar is like what I'm going to show up to. And it could be something, it could be a day that like was not convenient for me, but like whatever. Totally. But um, yeah, it's just like, Two days a week, always yep. at the same time. Yep. Um, locked in. Yeah. All I had to do was like book on the headgum calendar. Yep. And um Matt does the rest, uh-huh. like guest outreach and stuff like that. And everyone is always shows up. There's usually no issues. Um, I, I also there's a so many things I like about Get Played. It's one of the best. Um the I think it's it says a lot about the three of them that they don't need guest every episode. Mm-hmm. Not that a show that needs guests is like doesn't have talented producers or a host, but um, I think it's like very impressive when a show can just rely on their own dynamic, yeah. um, like week after week. And it says a lot about video games too that there's so much to cover with video games that um, it can be, you know, not challenging, but like bringing a guest on, then you're kind of having that conversation and figuring out that dynamic. Um, It's pretty cool that they don't need a guest like every episode in order to have a good episode. It's so impressive. It's just like, I was thinking this one time, I was like listening to Heather talk about something. I'm like, in, in a good way, it's like, they have so much to say. Yeah. Like there's so much going on in their brains. Yeah. Whereas like me, I feel like sometimes nothing is going on. 100% and I'm just like, me they're too. always thinking about stuff and they're like, extremely they have such insightful smart. things to say yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. They're extremely smart. Um, which is another thing that's fun about the show is as much as they tease each other for being stupid, the episode <laughs> yeah. that came out today was a lot of like, no, you're the dumb. I'm the <laughs> yeah. dumb one. You're the dumb one. Yeah, you're um, you're dumber. Yeah. How are you dumber? Uh, that was very funny. Um, they are all secretly very smart, um, which is very cool. Um, and yeah, what else about Get Played? Uh, yeah, I think the, I mean, the kind of the big thing was watching them uh, change the the premise from how did this get played to get played mm-hmm. and uh i know they thought a lot about it and i thought it was cool and i don't want to say that yeah i guess i'll say like more shows should consider <laughs> doing stuff like that where uh i think some shows probably just like stop entirely because they're yeah, like because they don't enjoy what they're doing anymore. yeah like i think a lot of hosts in that situation would say we don't like playing bad video games, so the show is done. Yeah. But they liked doing the show and each other and talking video games that they were like, we would rather um, tweak the, like, twist the premise so that we're still talking video games and having a good time mm-hmm. instead of torturing ourselves and playing games we don't like every week. Yeah. Um, so... Huge for them because I, I imagine, I mean, games, you're spending money on these games and you're also spending a lot of time playing this. It's a ton shit. of work. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I think about that. It's definitely one of the like bigger changes internally of a show that I can think of in the last five years because I think the move is just always like cancel the show uh, eventually Mm -hmm. because it's just like well i don't enjoy doing this let's stop so i think it's impressive when um hosts can you know and it says a lot about like confidence too of we feel like we can change the show and it'll be better for us Mm -hmm. and people will still stick around which they did yeah um which is very impressive um any other things i'm missing with get played so you record it you edit it um 
let's say you like co-produce it with Matt. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I really, ha- I honestly should have a fake producer title on that show. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> um, no, there's a lot of like organizational stuff too that goes in behind the scenes sure, that sure, people sure. don't know. Um, and have you played, have you found yourself playing more video games because of uh, the show? Yeah. So I only was put on that show because I had mentioned to someone that I play Fortnite. Nice. And then I guess someone remembered that and they're mm-hmm. like, okay, Rochelle should be on the show. Yeah. Because she is the only engineer we know who plays video games at HeadGum. Yeah. So thank God I was, I played Fortnite, <laughs> but that was the only Fortnite game I played. Fortnite got you the job. <laughs> Fortnite That's got me the cool. job. Um, and yeah, like I was not a big video game person like at all mm-hmm. until Fortnite. And yeah, now I'm like really exploring kind of like, I've always wanted to play horror games. Yeah. I've always been interested in ghosts and supernatural stuff. And, and I've like watched a lot of walkthroughs of like different horror games. Yeah. So I think that's like kind of where I want to explore. Do you have gaming. a do you have a favorite horror game yet? Are I've, you still exploring? I've only played Resident Evil Four so far. Do you like it? Yeah, I finished it. Wow! And I finished the DLC. I loved wow. it. It was so good. I did start playing Resident Evil Two before that, but it was too scary. <laughs> what do you think you're gonna play next? More in the Resident Evil verse? Something else? I think Matt really wants me to play Alan Wake 2. Nice. So I I might do that next. I was listening about Silent Hill. Ooh, wow. But we'll see. We'll see. There are so many scary games. I know. I'm excited. J Train says, play Sonic. She's not playing Sonic, (laughs) J Train. I don't know if you heard the end of today's Get Played episode. I haven't finished it yet. (laughs) Tell me. You can spoil it. (laughs) Um, They did a Dude Ranch segment. I love Dude Ranch. One of the best Uh, segments. Sonic characters. Great. And I did really poorly. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> that's really funny. I I can't wait to get to it. Actually, I'm actually quite embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many guys. Um, I feel strongly about that. There's too many, There's guys, too many guys in video games. Uh, speaking of end of the episode, we haven't even gotten to the podcast I know, simulator. We, we've just been yapping we've away. We've been yapping for an hour and 12 oh, minutes. Oh, my God. Um, my longest chat with a guest ever. That's how much fun oh, I'm having no. with Branch. Um, this is a blast. So we are going to dive into Podcast Simulator. But first, I must say my famous introduction, which is a thing I bookmarked. Rochelle, as you know, sometimes things out of your control yes. can sabotage us. That's just the nature of the job. But how we react can dictate our future. And with that, let us play Podcast Simulator. I'm horrified I don't want to die like Matt did. We shall see. (laughs) So just a little setup for this. Um, I ran this by my friend Zach. And he, he pointed out, you have entire scenarios that if she clicks the wrong thing, she won't see. I said, yeah, you're right. I, I don't I don't know how to I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> so that's life, baby. Whatever choices you make, there are basically choose wisely because there are entire worlds that I have built that uh <laughs> you will not see if you click the wrong thing. And another thing I've noticed is I've accidentally deleted the back button. Um, so (laughs) the chat might be saying, Hey, let's go back and see what the other thing is. I have lost the ability to click back. Um, there is no back button at all. We would have to completely start over. So it puts a lot of pressure on the decisions you make. So let's see how it goes today. You will be producing and engineering the tech interview podcast called breach protocol. Let's see a little bit more about this show. I might need to definitely zoom in for my eyes. Let's go like this. Here's a little bit about the show. Cybersecurity expert and former ethical hacker, Alexa. (laughs) Just a quick side (laughs) tangent. I know I'm only five words in. I would put last names, just making up names, 
and would Google the, like, what if this is a real person? And it often was. And I was like, oh, man, I'm creating entire worlds for, like, (laughs) a divorce attorney in North Carolina who's just trying to live her life. Yeah. Um, shout out Alexa Voss, shout out. which was the initial name, which oh, I think is pretty cool a, name. That's a nice name. Cybersecurity expert and former ethical hacker Alexa dives into the ones and zeros of a billion dollar company's cybersecurity system with the help of another tech genius. After a fun chat, Alexa and her guests explore security flaws in major companies and analyze how and why they might hack into them. Each episode ends with a game. The podcast network gave Alexa $1,000 per episode to spend however she pleases. Uh. At the end of the episode, Alexa has two minutes to apply her skills and basically hack into, to attempt to hack into the company and any part of the company that was discussed in the the episode. If she fails, she's got to give the $1,000 to the big (laughs) bad company. But if she wins, she donates it to a nonprofit that teaches children and adults, AKA everybody, Digital literacy and online safety in the modern world. Um, this is probably the most amount of effort I've put into one of these shows. It's kind of a lot of information to take in. But we'll just kind of quickly recap before getting your thoughts on this. So basically, the host, Alexa, is like a tech genius. Mm-hmm. She chats with her guests. And then they basically go to like McDonald's.com mm-hmm. and see if they can break into it. Um, she has basically two minutes at the end of the episode to attempt it. If she does it successfully, she donates the money to charity. If she fails, she has to give the money to the company. So a little bit of like stakes at the end of the episode, but it's a very like kind of tech forwardy show. Mm -hmm. What are your initial thoughts on this podcast, Rochelle? I mean, like the stakes are quite high yes. on this. Like I put $100 <laughs> initially and was like, that's boring. Let's add a zero. <laughs> and then it was like, God damn. So this is probably a bigger network that if they can shell out yeah. thousands like this. Just like not even being the one who's hacking, but just being part of this podcast, I would feel responsible Yeah, if they weren't able to do what they... Alexa wasn't able to to hack in. Just watching, being in the room with someone as a timer is going down and they have 30 seconds and you're wondering if they're going to able to hack anything. And I try to keep it vague that it's like, it doesn't have to be like, I'm now controlling McDonald's.com. It could be like any part of the website where they're like, look, I found this hole. Yeah, like I changed a price on the menu or something like that. Exactly, exactly. Anything like that. Okay. Um, crazy, crazy yes. podcast. Yeah, I like it. Um, but I'm biased because I made it up. <laughs> okay, let's. Someone th- should actually do this. That is my goal. I think it would be very fun if one day someone made all these shows that I made <laughs> up. So you have a few roles here. Um, this is obviously a show that um, I don't know. Uh, I I made an assumption here, and I apologize if I was wrong, that you are not a um, hacking expert, Rochelle. So I said it should be co-produced with an expert in the tech cybersecurity world. Um, You are 100% correct. Okay. I do not know anything about hacking. Neither do I, and it's crazy that I made this up. Um, So you are co-producing it with someone who has a lot more of like an expertise in this field, probably someone that like Alexa already works with. Okay. And you're kind of just maybe helping like sourcing some ideas of like, let's try Uber and stuff like that. Okay. Um, Scheduling, as you know, big part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, You do make clips for the show. Got it. And um, it's on a network. So you're working with the network, just making sure all the ads are recorded, kind of basic stuff, growing the damn thing. I have that on basically every one of these. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely where more of your weight is being thrown around is as the engineer and editor um, of the pod. Got it. Um, so you're recording them all and you're editing it. And here's just a little information about what the network is supplying. Oh, a video editor. Yep. That's so nice. So they supply the video editor, which is cool. They have a booker, but I imagine Alexa will be booking her own guest, but mm. it's an option if we need it. Mm-hmm. Marketing support, ad support. Um, any cursory overall thoughts on 
the roles? I mean, my first thought, and maybe it's not less to do with the roles, is how legal is it what we're doing and how liable am I if something goes wrong? Rochelle might be perfectly setting up some future oh, scenarios. Fuck. We shall see. I'm so uh, stressed. Yes, this is kind of a stressful show. In addition to the, like, two-minute countdown with $1,000 on every episode, um, there's definitely some, like, legal implications and concerns if it doesn't go well. Um, so let's assume that because the network greenlit it, they had these conversations and... Um, are assuming best case scenario, mm -hmm. but it is kind of a bizarre um, situation. My son board says every podcast should start by everyone involved saying, is this legal? <laughs> I a hundred percent agree. Um, okay. So that's your role. You're feeling good. Um, okay, let's okay. begin with the first scenario. So I always call the first one pilot's license. For the first episode, Alexa interviews longtime friend Thomas Fox. This one I did put a last name. This interview <laughs> happens over Zoom. Thomas specializes in catching black hat hackers. This is a real thing I looked up. A type of hacker who steals personal information from everyday people and sells it to corporations. Oh. Um, so he specializes in kind of catching those people specifically. Yeah. Hero. When Alexa asked Thomas why he decided to pursue this career, he tells a captivating story of being a child and witnessing his parents' financial information get stolen from them, um, and hackers took thousands from his family and destroyed it. Destroyed it. it was very sad. Damn. As he is telling this extremely personal story, he starts to choke up. Then the unthinkable happens. His art, his audio starts to go in and out. Alexa is not saying anything. <laughs> Rochelle, as the engineer. Do you interrupt this story <laughs> to call out that his audio is going in and out or he's crying? Do you not say anything and keep it to yourself? The chat is saying, I really hope Rochelle does not go to jail or die. <laughs> I also I do not want to die or go to jail. Me too. Okay, this is interesting. I feel like I have kind of, maybe not to the extent of someone crying, but like feeling awkward interrupting someone. Yes. But at the end of the day, they are there recording a podcast. Very true. And if there's no audio, there's no podcast. Very true. So I very gingerly interrupt and ask okay. to fix some audio issues. The chat is pointing out a thing that I was thinking of live as I was reading. I was so close to spelling interrupt correctly. Oh. And... Uh, I would like to tell <laughs> the creators of the app Twine, which is what this app is, my guys, please add a spell check feature. You will save me <laughs> a lot of embarrassment when I am live streaming to people. Um, but so close on interrupt recording spelling, but we are going to select that one. And um, Rochelle very eloquently said exactly what I said. It is awkward, but you have to do it. This is a show after all. You apologize and jump in and let Thomas know his mic's going in and out. Alexa, the host, kind of hops in as well so that you don't sound nuts. Thomas apologizes and fixes it. Everyone is apologizing. Sorry, it's awkward, but he does a quick recap. Nothing is lost. Mm. Obviously, it's not the same as the first time he said it when he was, like, crying, but nothing was lost. Okay. Here are the grades you got, Rochelle. The host gives you an A. The network gives you an A. Amazing. Um. So... Yeah, that, that's kind of like a takeaway that I've had is sometimes it is so awkward um, interrupting a guest or a host for like these exact kind of things, um, but you really have to uh, get comfortable <laughs> with the uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, it's a thing I have all the time when guests – start a recording like before I play the theme song and their mic is like here mm -hmm. and they're just chatting like this. And the thing that just started to make me more comfortable with it is like, this is only going to be a problem for me later when I'm editing. It. Yeah. So if I just do the four second thing of, Hey, I'm sorry. Is there any chance you could scoot the mic a little bit closer? I'm saving myself like hours of work in Absolutely. the future when I'm editing it. 
And so there's definitely like a dance with it that can be kind of awkward. Um, Sean and Hayes call it out every time that it's awkward. Um, <laughs> but it's like it's that or the audio sounds slightly off in a way that uh, I don't like. Um, so, yeah, you did the right thing. You addressed the elephant in the room. Um, so Trash Talk says less awkward for you to be like, fix this real quick in the moment, then have to explain why it's maybe bad later. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. uh, it sucks having to be like, hey, so kind of an issue with the recording. Because I think that kind of like fucks with your, not that like things can't happen mm -hmm. um, out of your control, but. But knowing when you could have fixed it. That's kind of my big thing. Not that I like tell anyone this, but a big thing in my head is I try not to make the same like preventable mistake more than once at really at all. Mm -hmm. But when something happens where I'm like, oh, I could have fixed that. I just try to make sure like in the future, like I don't do that again. Cause then it's like, well, I knew that I could have fixed that, you know? Yeah. There was recently a record for seek treatment where I, or maybe it was chaotic. Mm -hmm. I didn't hit the record video but button. Yeah. Like, and I realized five minutes into the, the recording, the recording yeah. and I was like a debate in my head of like, do what I, I do? just, do I make them start over yeah. or, or in post? Do I just like have a graphic explaining what happened? And I was what like, what did you do? I had them start over and I'm glad. Wow. I did. Good for you. Yeah. Um, it's, that's tough. I mean, look at you literally just did the thing that you said. So good for you. Um, A's all around a real life, not Kramer's boat says a real life pod sim moment. Um, that's cool. Yeah. It's hundred <laughs> percent true. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that can be really tricky, but I think you did the right thing. Um, the last flagrant ones episode, uh, it starts the video and the audio starts four seconds differently. Um, it's because I hit record and was like, whenever you guys are ready. And then the guest said, should we be sitting closer? And then Hayes said, I want to talk about the, and then I hit uh, record. The video. <laughs> yeah. um, so the audio and the video have like a three second difference. Uh -huh. That one I was like, I don't think we need to restart. Yeah, but yeah. Um, it's tough. I wish they were all just one single. Button. I know. Um, okay. You passed. You got an A. Thank God. From the host and the network. Um, let's go to the next scenario. Before you start recording the second episode, Alexa excitedly tells you about this new microphone she got. It cuts out nearby noise so that she does not have to wear headphones when she's oh. recording on Zoom. The laptop audio will be okay because it won't bleed into the microphone. What do you do, Rochelle, as the engineer and editor? Do you do nothing and say like, okay, sounds good? Or do you ask to still wear headphones? God, this is so tough because I don't really trust that mic. No. And I feel like whatever mic is like, it's probably going to be cutting off. I don't know. The gate on it. Mm -hmm. Me using audio terms that I have learned in the past year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Using <laughs> you, what you've learned. Yeah, like might not pick up some other stuff. Like if she's mumbling or like uh -huh. other sound noises that would make the audio sound more natural. Yep. So are you leaning, you're going to ask to still wear headphones? I'm going to ask her to still wear headphones. Okay. Let's I'm scared see. there's no back button. There is no back button. How can the mic, so this, this was my beef with it, and others who have been in similar scenarios. How can the mic cut surrounding noise out if you and the guest are talking at the same time? So this is kind of a flaw people have noted is... Uh, it can cut out background sound, but if you are talking and someone is talking in the laptop yeah, at the same time, true. it can't differentiate between you and the laptop. It's It might cut out the background sound, but it's still going to get sound. Yeah. It's hearing sound. 100%. So knowing that, and like what you said too, if the noise gate on it is too extreme and you're saying like, yeah, but you're saying it quietly, it might just not get it at all if you're talking quietly. So there's several issues that could be there. Mm -hmm. Just to be safe, you ask Alexa to wear the headphones. She's a little annoyed, but you did save the day by fixing the issue with Thomas earlier. <laughs> so you have earned her trust and she makes the adjustment and the audio sounds better. Amazing. Post grade B, 
I might have would actually argue B plus network grade A. Okay, okay. Next scenario. All right. You're killing not, it. Not too bad so far. Okay. As, apologies for the length. I will do a quick job reading. During a very fun episode, Alexa and her guest find dozens of holes on Twitter's cybersecurity. <laughs> looks like Eon Eon looks like Elon <laughs> fired a few too many people, opening up a ton of flaws on one of the world's biggest websites. Clips of this episode go viral all over the place, especially Twitter. Unfortunately, it brings out the bros who did a little digging on their own. They find a video of you from college doing the ice bucket challenge. <laughs> the bros point out an edit in the video that clearly shows the water being replaced with room temperature water. How can you tell <laughs> room temperature water? The ice is gone when the water is poured on Rochelle. Rochelle, you have two options. You're being called out by Elon Bros on Twitter for a devious cut in a video that you did years ago during the Ice Bucket Challenge. Do you ignore this call out or do you address it? Now, this is a very real situation we've all been in. I haven't thought about the Ice Bucket Challenge in so long. Um, I thought about it two hours ago. <laughs> Wow, this is, I'm like heated because mm -hmm. why am I being brought into this? I'm not the one the one doing the hacking. Yep. That's the bros for you. They know that you're the producer of the show. I would say they, I agree, you shouldn't be called out at all. But let's say to build, to make some context, that viral clip if you click on the bio, it's like hosted by Alexa, produced by Rochelle. Mm. So then the bros went from there. Okay, that makes sense. Still shitty. <clears throat> what I would want to do is address it. Okay. I would want to defend myself. Okay. If. Chat saying, I hate these bros. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, if. If it, the, the water was still cold. Okay. But if it would actually was room temperature then the, oh what am I gosh. supposed to address? That's so... I. What did I do? I love that you're going in on the temperature of the water. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, yeah, that's tricky. If, it, if the water was still cold, you would probably want to address it. <laughs> but if it was truly room temperature water, do you ignore it or do you address it? I think... In these scenarios, even though I always want to fight back online, mm -hmm. the best answer is always to ignore it. I agree. Unfortunately, someone does not. Ignoring the issue somehow <laughs> only makes it worse. Alexa is frustrated that her great episode is being overshadowed by this clip of you. She asked the network to provide a different producer. You're fucking kidding me. Unfortunately, you are fired from the show by not addressing the allegations of the room temperature water in the ice bucket challenge video edit. So you did fail, but but fortunately, even though there's not a back button, I am able to click here, which will take us back to the initial scenario <laughs> okay. where now we will, I guess, have to address it. Yeah. Then I guess I thought I was going to be doing the, the best thing for the show. So would I. Yeah. I, but, I, yeah, I guess if we're going off of what I wanted to do. <laughs> yes, it was address it. So now you get to do what you want to do. Okay, wow. I Not Kramer's boat fired. with a good observation. Unlike the water, Alexa is ice cold. <laughs> uh, let's click address it. Now, it's still challenging. You apologize and move on. <laughs> the network gives you a C. The host gives you a B. Alexa hasn't. And so now we're on to the next scenario. And this happens, too. This is a very real thing of... Sometimes something weird happens and then everyone just has to move on. Um, and so that's kind of what happens here. There's no like big comeuppance. You just are like, sorry, that was weird. And then everyone just reports <laughs> no the next episode. Yeah, no tap apology. Everyone moves on. This is interesting. Alexa has an interesting idea for the next episode. Point out all the flaws in the podcast network website. <laughs> Rochelle, talented producer, engineer, editor, what are you doing in this situation? Oh, my God. This is so tough. 
<laughs> Point out all the flaws in the podcast network website. I think it would be a very funny episode. Mm -hmm. But the, am I a freelancer in this position? That is a great question. Um, you are. Okay. So I'm that, thinking that is a thousand dollar question you just asked. <laughs> so technically, if Alexa likes me enough and I allow this to happen, yep, she hopefully will step up if the network is pissed and want to keep me. But the network will be pissed. I'm saying sure. Okay. <laughs> We're risking it. Rochelle says, yes, let's do it. <laughs> Why not? It'll be good to know these things. Fun concept, too. <laughs> Network hates that you did this. You did not even give them a heads up. You are off the show. Rochelle Chen, thank you so much for being here. The host appreciates you. Uh, you did get fired from the show. Um, twice. <laughs> twice. Um, but uh, like we said at the beginning, um, this is a, I don't want to say, I guess it kind of is a controversial show. Um, it's a dicey pod that you agreed to work on, so dicey things happen. High risk, high reward. That's it. That's the game. <laughs> um, thank you so much for podcast simulating, producing engineering, the show Breach Protocol. Um, it was yeah. a ton of fun playing this with you, and I am enjoying making these shows more and more as I throw... Um, entire scenarios at people. Um, what did you miss? There was several about um, uh, McDonald's threatening to sue the network. <laughs> oh man! Um, I'm sad I didn't go that path. That would have. I been honestly fun. think you made great decisions. <laughs> um, it's very fascinating uh, building out these worlds. Thank you so much for being here. I went super long, but I always go long when I'm having a fun chat with my friend. <laughs> Um, is there anything you'd like to plug? I know you're doing Twitch streams. Everyone should go follow Rochelle right now on Twitch. Yeah, uh, you can follow me at yard underscore underscore sour. I will probably be streaming some games or games in the new year. That's awesome. Um, everyone should go check that out. Listen to Get Played. Listen to the Dude Ranch segment at the end of today's oh, episode. Don't listen to it. <laughs> um, um, and uh, I can't wait to listen to. Uh, the end of that and some future episodes as well. Thank you, Rochelle. You're the best. This was awesome. Oh yeah, this was so fun. Thank um, you for coming up with this amazing, insane scenario for me. <laughs> it was a blast. <laughs> you passed, honestly. You technically <laughs> failed at the end, but uh, spoiler alert, there was a lot of uh, landmines throughout it, and you, <laughs> I, you passed the most. Okay, okay. 